Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to do a common examination question. Design a synchronous cyclical finite state machine using JK flip-flops that has a state sequence. In this case, we have 503427. That's the sequence of states. We know that it's going to require three flip-flops because the maximum number is seven. Show that the state table and the state diagram simplify the flip-flop input functions and draw the logic diagram. Analyze your design to determine if it's self-correcting and find a set of state equations for this device. Well, that's a lot of things we have to do but we have to take it a step at a time. The first thing we're going to do is to draw a partial state table. We can only put in the states that we know, so that's why it's called this partial state table, because if you check the sequence of states we've been given, two of the states are missing which is why the table only has six rows instead of eight. As you can see, we put them in the order in which they are supposed to go. Five transitions to zero, zero transitions to three, three transitions to four, four transitions to two, two transitions to seven, seven transitions back to five where we started from which is why it's called cyclical it goes through a cycle okay now we need to find the flip-flop input functions that are going to cause this particular cycle to occur so we've written the flip-flop inputs over there on the right for each of the flip-flops a b and c the next thing we want to do is we want to draw the excitation table for the JK flip-flop. This shows us what the inputs of J and K will have to be like in order to achieve the desired end. Now watch closely as we proceed. First of all, we want to get the A to move from a 0 to a 1. I'm sorry, from a 1 to a 0. As you can see by the circle, the present state is 1 on the A and the next state is 0. We find that row in our excitation table and we put in the X1 under the JA and KA so that we can get that desired change. The A flip-flop will change to the next state of a zero from a one when we put that input. Let's try another one. Okay, well we fill them out and you can check them to make sure they're right, but we'll show you one more in slow motion. We want to go from a 0 to a 1 on the C in the second row. We find the 0 and the 1 in the excitation table where the 0 transitions to a 1. And we write the 1x under the KC for that particular row. All right, well, I think by watching it over several times, you can figure it out. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill out the entire table, as you can see there. Once the table is fully populated, the next step is to draw a Carnot map for each of the six input functions. We need to draw a Carnot map for all six because each of those functions has in at least one zero. If you had a row, sorry, a column that was just one and x's, 
then it would automatically be a 1. But because we have the presence of 0 in there, we can have no such simple time. We have to put each of those input functions on a Carnot map. Before we start to do that, we want to put x's in all the Carnot maps at the unused states. Make sure you do that. Every unused state must have an x. There are two unused states. The two rows that are missing are 1 and 6. Check that now and you will see that there is no 1 or 6 in the table. So we put x's and at 1 and 6 in all of the Carnot maps. 1 and 6 in all of the Carnot maps. Then we fill them out because we can easily add the other 6 from the particular column in the input function table. And then we circle them correctly as shown. Make sure you do that. You can circle the X's with the 1's to get a bigger group. But you will not circle X's by themselves. You will only circle X's with 1's if it helps you to get a bigger legal group. And the last step is to write down the functions based on the circling. And those are our flip-flop input functions that are required to complete our planning. So the next thing to do, we've written the input functions that we've calculated there on the top in black. And we're going to prepare an unused state analysis table. Notice that we've got the present state listed as the two unused states. And we're now going to populate the input functions and see what the next state is going to be based on our input functions shown. So we're going to do this uh, slowly. Notice that we have circled the JA equals B. We've also circled the B column and copied it back to the JA column. When we say that JA equals B, all we're really saying is that JA will take whatever the B has in the present column. So that is why we've copied the B column to the JA column because JA is B. Okay, let us do another one. KA is B bar. So all we have to do is reverse it. Where we had the B for the JA, where there's a 0, we make a 1, and where there's a 1, we make a 0. And that is, in fact, B bar. Let's do another one. JB is C bar. So we've circled the C so you can see what it is, and we've reversed it, meaning we've barred it, and we've written it down under the JB column. We've now reached the KB, and the KB is C. So, as you can see, we've just written back the C column there. We're now at the JC, which is A bar. A bar, so we've circled that in yellow. And we've barred the A and put it under the JC column. Now we've reached KC. Now KC is two of them, A bar and B bar. But it happens that A and B are the same, so we just bar them and put it down. Now that we've got all of that, what is the next step? Well, we need to use the truth table for the JK flip-flop in order to predict what is the next state going to be. Notice that on J and JA and KA for 0, 1, we have 0, 0, 1 as the present state. 
Now, what we do there now is we circle the zero one and we find that the zero one in the truth table says that we should get zero output on the queue. That's what it tells us in the truth table that the queue will be a zero when we have zero one on the J and the J A and the K A. So we simply write two zeros because J B and K B is the same as J A and K. So we simply write two zeros for the next A and B in that case. Next, we look at the 1-1, one, one, which is the JC and the KC. And the 1-1 one, one in the table tells us that we must complement whatever is the C. Well, if we look across there in the top row at the C, we see that the C is a 1. We've circled it there, and we make that a 0 because we're supposed to complement it. Okay, so make sure you understand that part. And then we can go ahead and uh, fill in the other one for the second row, since we know how to do that now. And we're just going to do that truth table thing over again so that you may see it in slow motion. We have a 1, 0 now, which says that our Q must be a 1. See, for the second row under the J, A, and K, A, we have 1, 0, and we've circled that in the truth table, and that tells us that the Q must be a 1. And the next one, the J, B, and K, B, is the same. So we write another one, and we go to the 0. The 0, 0 now on the K, C means that there's no change. We've circled that. So we've shown the one that's not going to change. It's in the C column of the present state. And we simply write it back into the next column because there is no change. Study that carefully until you're happy with that. Now we've finished working out our unused state table. And we can see that 001 is going to go to state 0, 0, 0, but we see that 6, 1, 1, 0 is going to stick in 6. It's not going to be able to change. In other words, the present state is 6 and the next state is 6. It means we're stuck. It means our finite state device is not self-correcting because we're stuck in 6. Self-correcting means that the unused states will return to the cycle eventually. If we get stuck in 6, there's no way that we can get back to our cycle. We show you that now by drawing the state diagram. The state diagram shows by arrows how we go around the cycle. As you can see there, we go around the cycle 2 to 7 to 5 to 0 to 3 to 4 back to 2. Or if you want to start from 5 as we did in the original specification, we get back to 5. But now we've added the two unused states based on our state analysis. We've added the 1, which goes into the 0, and we've added the 6 with an arrow back to itself. This is how we indicate that the 6 is stuck. So basically, another way for saying that the device is not self-correcting is because our state diagram is split into two distinct sections, or two diagrams, if you will, with no connection between the two. As long as there's no connection between any of the states and of the others in the diagram, then with a 6 or even more than a 6, if there were other ones st stuck off by themselves but not connecting back into the main cycle, that would be another way of proving that the device is not self-correcting. So I don't think the logic diagram is going to give any trouble, but we've drawn the logic diagram there and we've labeled it so that you can see Note the clock 
in red is connected to all of the flip-flops. This is a synchronous device and all of the flip-flops are going to change at exactly the same instant. And by feeding the A, B and C back to the input as prescribed by our flip-flop input function equations, we will get the A, B, C to follow the cycle that we have programmed for it. So the last thing we have to do before we're done is to compute the state equations of the system. Remember the state equations are going to give us the next state of A, B, and C. And that state is going to be based on the current present state. So now we are going to draw our completed state table. Notice now we have our state table with both present and next state and we've got all eight rows filled in because we now know what the unused states are going to do. So we've included the results of our state analysis to give us a complete state table and all we have to do now is to look at the AT plus 1, which is the next state. Now, if you look at the column A in the next state, you will see that we have four ones. We have four ones on 2, 3, 6, and 7. So we mark 2, 3, 6, and 7. We circle them. And we say that A, T plus 1 is B. In the B1, we have the ones on 0, 2, 4, and 6. And in the C ones, we have it on 0, 2, and 7. You can see that in our present next state table. And there we have circled and written the equations for our next state in A, B, and C. Thank you for watching the Stephen Mendes channel and we'll see you in the next video.